Hi everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I'd like to demonstrate one of my all-time favorite eye features. So eye features can be really awesome for putting in different types of operations into parts, but they're usually pretty much tied to a particular plane. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a what I call a compound eye feature, meaning you'd have operations from two different directions. And uh, I don't really know what this feature is actually called, but I jokingly call it the IKEA feature because uh, I've put together enough IKEA furniture in my life. I'm very familiar with this. So you'll see what it looks like in a second. But to start out with, it's basically going to be a large bore through the face of a wood panel. And then along the edge of the panel, there's going to be a hole. And the hole intersects the bore, and it's where you put one of those cam nuts in and then you slide a piece of furniture in, tighten the cam nut, and that makes the connection. So I've taken the liberty of already creating these parameters, uh, the bore diameter and the depth, and then the characteristics of the hole. So we're just gonna knock out a simple eye feature, test it out, and, and show you how you can create some of these compound features. So to start, I'm just gonna use a simple primitive box. I'll use the XY plane in this case, and Typically when you make an eye feature, you don't want to reference the origin point just in case it can give you some kind of screwball results in the in the final part where it's trying to reference the origin. So I'm actually going to create mine off a little bit. I'm just going to make a four tab four, so a four by four square that's off centered and the thickness of one inch in this scenario. So nothing too fancy, but as I recommend for everybody who makes eye features, I would recommend that you save these to an eye feature base location. So if I hit save here, I would just uh, create a new folder if I didn't already have one. Eye feature, oh, yeah, eye feature bases or base models is what I typically call them. Oh, I can't spell. Anyway, come in here, eye feature base models, and I'll just call this the IKEA feature again loving lovingly called so now that we've got that we'll get right into the nitty-gritty of the modeling first step is going to be creating a work point so I've shown this in a, another video where you can set up a work point that ends up becoming the locator point so I'm just gonna do the low-hanging fruit and I'll do a center of a loop of edges just to stick it in the middle and now I also know that the bore is going to go in a certain depth. So here's the trick. Eye features really seem to work best when everything is based off a common sketch plane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a plane that's going to serve as the central plane of the hole and it's also going to help define the bore. So a little bit tricky but we'll give it a go and of course you're watching the video feel free to review this as often as you like but I'm going to simply offset from my surface and I'm going to go into the part. But the trick is I want to go into the part the distance that that hole is located. So I'm going to grab a parameter and I'm going to grab the whole edge dist. But that pushes it away from the plane. So remember to get to the front and say negative whole edge dist. Cool. So I've got a reference point. I've got a plane. Now I can start a sketch on this plane. So once inside, we can right click project and I want to grab this point because that's going to serve as the center of my bore. And then if it's easier for you, you can press the F7 key on your keyboard that cuts everything away. And now we can start modeling. So I'm going to go relatively quick. I'm going to create a circle here and you can always grab the parameters a couple different ways, but there's my bore diameter. And then I will also come up here. I'll grab a three-point circle. Let's see. Yeah, I'll do three points. So I click here. I'm not going to adjust the angle right away. I can call this one. Uh, let's see. Delete. I already forgot my parameter name. So that's where you can just press the delete key and list them. That is going to be the whole depth. Perfect. And then I'll go ahead and hit enter. Then we'll define the width. I'll leave that alone for now. And now we've got that hole sort of defined. I'm going to create the center 
as a center line and that's the line that I started right in the middle of the bore and now if I select the general dimension and I dimension between the two that gives me what's called a linear diameter so that's why I waited just a little bit grab that and that's going to be my whole diameter perfect now a couple of things I wanted to be able to drill this so I could use it up top and in certain scenarios maybe I'd want to use it on a side so I'm adding an angle measure so I'll just quickly put a line in here there we go and I'll hold down the control right click and I can say I want that to be coincident with the center point there now that passes completely through select that line Oop, select the line there we go not the constraint and so now I've got a construction line right in the middle I can now dimension between this and this and that's my bore angle oh, I'm sorry hole angle perfect there's my 90 degrees so that's pretty much it it's pretty straightforward and you can of course adjust these parameters you'll see that naming the parameters is going to be really important when I get to the eye feature but for now let's go ahead and actually build that feature so <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is extrude the bore and this will be the trickiest part of it if I right click and extrude I want to select that bore profile and you can see it also wants to grab part of that hole as well it wants to be a, I want it to be a cut but we're kind of in a central plane so I want to cut two different directions but they may not be equal this is where it gets a little bit interesting with the asymmetric extrude option so it's going one inch in this way but if you recall I put that plane in the hole dist so if I come over here and I list my parameters I can grab a whole edge distance and that'll be exactly the cut from that plane to the edge of the or the surface of the part and then for the other direction I'm going to use an equation as well I know that I've got an overall bore depth so what I need to do is subtract however far I went in for the whole edge dist and then I have to uh, subtract that from the bore so I'll come in here and I'll say all right so I cheated you know I'll just for the sake of time <laughs> there you go so now I've got the total bore depth but since I'm starting from the plane it only goes a little bit into the part from the plane and then it goes all the way from the plane back to the edge of the part hit OK beautiful easy 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 well once you use the, the asymmetric <laughs> extrude it's pretty easy I'm going to share the sketch there we go and then this one's even more straightforward we're just going to do a revolve cut the whole thing uh, cut select the axis there we go select the air I found the center line perfect hit OK so that's it it's really pretty straightforward to make the feature the tricky bit is of course using some sort of a central plane make sure you save early save often and now we'll extract the eye feature so the manage tab I will extract an eye feature so I'm going to select the extrusion and I'm going to select the revolution and so what I want to do to make sure that I get this is I want to also grab because I don't want to grab the sketch plane because that's somewhere inside the part so I want to grab the work plane actually and the work plane will grab the surface and then that defines that that drop and then I can also sometimes grab this point so now it's looking for a plane and a point cool so that way I'll, I'll have two choices to place it instead of one I'm not going to play with any of the limits or anything we'll just hit save here just to get it going and uh, I will just call this IKEA feature of course you could save it in whatever folder you want this is just where the out of the box stuff is so the project file is complaining about it but nah, not gonna worry and let's test it so we come over here to a part we'll make another primitive box We'll set this up to do 12 by 12, a little bit bigger size this time. Uh, one inch thick is fine. And away we go. So what I try to do by using a point reference in the eye feature, it makes it more 
like placing a sheet metal punch, which is a lot more efficient in Inventor. So I'll go ahead and add some points to simulate that, just like I might with the sheet metal punch. I guess I don't. I'll just add a couple. That's good. So once we've done that, we can finish the sketch. And now we can insert the eye feature. A couple ways to do that. I'll just come over to the Manage tab. I'll find my IKEA feature. Oh, cleverly stored it to easy place to find. And so now I get to place it. So I pick a point or a plane. I pick a point. And then I could play with the values. I'm just going to hit finish. And there puts in your eye feature. So pretty slick. It allows me to drill holes in two directions. And of course, if you wanted to go back later and modify it, you could right click on your feature. You can edit the feature. And in this case, I'll say my angle is zero degrees. And hit finish, and now you see it shoots it out the side instead. So just a, a really interesting eye feature. I love using this one. So hopefully this gives you uh, some freedom to be creative. And as long as you can kind of tie the features to one plane, you should be able to do lots of successful compound eye features. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.